Hello, everyone, and welcome to CIT 130. My name is Jeff Seaman, and I will be teaching this class. Let's get started here. All right, so um, kind of get started here. Before we get started, I'm going to talk about the syllabus, but just a little bit of introduction with this class. It is an online class, so it's not an in-person class. I've taught this class in person, so um, it's, it's, I'm used to setting up in front of a class, and kind of going through it. So this class will be a little bit different. Um, each week when we do a lecture, it'll be a, a video lecture such as this. Um, what I'll do is I'll split it up between a lecture and a lab. So for example, the lecture will be talking about the lesson that we're gonna be learning this week or the week, the week of. And then I'll have a separate folder for lab and it'll be me doing some demonstration of how to do such as, let's say we learn how to program in arrays or or multi inheritance whatever the case is, whatever that subject is for the week, we'll do the lab separate and it'll be me showing the Eclipse window, me writing some code. Um, potentially in the future, it'll also be me on a, on a whiteboard kind of coding out some things or it'll just be me sketching out uh, the best I can on a computer. Um, so I do a lot better in person, but you know, this is online. Um, and for those of you, if this is your first time doing an online class, um, I try to make it as easy as possible. Um, my messaging is always open, and we'll talk about this during the syllabus as well. The syllabus is available online, but you know I prefer that you kind of wa walk through this lecture, listen to what I have to say. Um, you may see some things in there that's a little bit different. So we'll kind of get started here. Um, I already introduced myself. Uh, that's my primary email address at ccac.edu. I check it very frequently throughout the day. Um, uh, my office hours. I teach a class in person on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 4.30. Um, so if you need to make an appointment on any of those days, um, let me know in advance and I'll be available after the class at 4.30. Um, primarily because I have a, a regular full-time job where I work Monday through Friday and it's an eight-hour day. I usually start six, seven o'clock in the morning and um, I work up to the three o'clock and then I start teaching. Um, and on Wednesdays, I have a class from 6 to 10.30. In this class, prepare, um, it'd be like before, if you want to meet me at 5 o'clock or whatever, we can meet. All right, so um, the course title, uh, Java Programming 8th Edition. Um, hopefully, if you've ordered a book or you haven't ordered a book, please let me know because the book is very important. Um, but anyways, this is the information. Um, this course provides a guide for developing application uh, using Java programming language. So Java is a very popular language among professional programmers because it can be used to build visually interesting geographical user interfaces, web-based applications, um, uh, web interface, or, or what we call it, web um, references such as uh, um, uh, web APIs and so forth. Um, it also could be utilized to develop uh, um, Android mobile applications, which is written in Java. Um, this class right here is more of an advance of Java. So at this point, you've already taken CIT 111. So you have a, a basic understanding of what Java is. Um, uh, so different instructors or professors at the school teach a little bit differently. So hopefully you had a good experience with it. Um, I really won't touch base of anything that you've learned in CIT 111. We'll just go directly into the more advanced stuff. Um, one of the things I do throw in there um, is we'll talk about source code repository. I think source code repository is very important because when you get out into, if you're going for your associate's degree, if you're going for a certificate, whatever the case is, you're going to get a job and they're going to say, okay, what's your source code repository background? And you're going to say, I don't have any. And they're going to say, all right. So when they're figuring out people for a job, they're either going to take a risk and say, you know what, we'll teach them whatever. But um, I'll give you an example. I had a student in my class previously. Um, it was actually my CIT 130 class. Uh, he was looking to do, get an internship for a uh, software company in Pittsburgh, which is a gaming company. And um, it came down to him and another individual. And he got the uh, internship because, guess what? He knew um, Source Code Repository. So the Source Code Repository that I taught in the class happened to be the one that they were utilizing. So that gave him benefit. He was able to say, hey, this is what I did and so forth. And they were, they were impressed with that. 
So that will be very beneficial in this job in those source code repository. We'll also talk about um, different uh, uh, life cycles. Uh, we'll talk about the two popular ones, Agile and um, uh, Waterfall. And those are very important things because they kind of coexist with the source code repository. Um, in addition, the actual programming part of it, we'll talk about arrays. We'll talk about the advanced array concepts. Um, introduction to inheritance. This is very important because once you put all this together and you write your program, you're like, wow, that really makes sense. I get it. Um, we'll talk about exception handling, input, output. And, and you know what? I just noticed I have exception handling here twice. So I'll have to fix that. It's supposed to be um, uh, graphic user interfaces. Uh, um, so uh, swing basically. All right, so uh, learning outcomes. When a student uh, completes his or her course, what are they gonna learn? Uh, the course assumes that you know you have little programming experience, but it provides a solid background and good object-oriented programming techniques. So we'll talk about the good um, programming techniques, things that you wanna learn in this class. Um, course outcomes. Um, understand concepts using object-oriented language. Uh, know how to modify and create simple Java programs and have tools to create more complex examples. So one of the things, I'm not sure, I think some of the professors at CCAC use NetBeans. Um, I don't use NetBeans, I use Eclipse. And the reason I use Eclipse is very, very reasonable is because all companies are using Eclipse for the development. So you won't find a company using uh, NetBeans. If you do, it's gonna be a very older company that is just be behind in technology. Eclipse is the more modern um, IDE that you wanna use. So I wanna prepare you guys for um, the real world experience. Um, possess fundamental knowledge of object oriented language. Um, this will advance your knowledge, such as C will be something that you could get into C sharp, Visual Basic, and so forth. Um, so, we talked about required. I will be using Eclipse. I have Bitbucket here. I haven't really decided. We're going to be using Bitbucket. Um, it's Git repository, or we may be using TFS. Um, which is uh, another repository, and we'll talk about those repositories. Um, and that'll be one of your assignments, um, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, for now, let's just move on. Uh, teaching methods, uh, each class will consist of some of the following. Video lecture time. So each week I'll have a video, such as we'll have two videos, well, multiple videos. We'll have one that is uh, the lecture, me talking right now, but this is more of the syllabus. We'll have another one that is me, uh, discussing lab work. So for example, whatever the project is for the week, I'll kind of take you through some examples. Um, I believe in, what I don't believe in is kind of th giving you guys a book and saying, here, read it and do it. Because at the end of the day, you know, you could easily go and visit any website and do it on your own. And that's not what I want to do. I want to give you guys um, the best um, learning experience you're going to get. So in the lab, it'll be me taking you through a series of different videos or a series of different options of how to do certain things based off that week's subject. Um, so for example, I might do something and you know it's not a live class, but you could say, hey professor, or hey Jeff, or hey Mr. Seaman, whatever you wanna call me is fine. Um, you could say, you know what, I've seen you do this and I really don't know. What will make it easier for me is if you do a screenshot and say, hey, uh, I've seen you do this and I just don't really understand how you're getting it or what you're doing. Great, then we'll talk about it. And like I said, if if um, talking through email doesn't work, you could call me. Um, we could text, or um, sometimes uh, you could even meet me in person um, before or after class. All right, um, evaluation plan. So each week I like to do a discussion question. So I'll have either one or two discussion questions. They'll be worth um, a, a, a certain amount of points, um, usually two points per question, um, maybe four. I think in this class I'm doing four points. Uh, let me double check here. Uh, actually, it's four points. I have two here, but I have to change it. So it's two, four points per discussion question. Um, discussion question is the easiest points that you can get. So I might say, uh, I might have an article on uh, Java Clips about the new one coming out. And all you have to do is read about it and write something about it. But it has to be at least 250 words. And then Reply to someone else's, um, something else that they wrote, boom, you got four points. That easy. Those are the easiest points. And that's worth, and we'll go into how much it's worth, but those are the easiest points you get in this class. If you do your assignments, and even if you don't get it, I work with you to so you could get it 
those are easy points as well. So remember that when you're trying to figure out how maybe it's the last week and you're like, oh, you know, Mr. Seaman, you know, I got a 78 and I really need some extra credit. Well, and I look at your discussion questions, you haven't did them. I say, you know what, um, so-and-so, you had the opportunity to get the 28 points. Now, one thing is I do give you guys opportunities for um, get extra credit. Um, a lot of times they have things going on in the school. Don't know based on your schedule, but I'll make it available if you tend something that they have going on in the school, you get extra credit. We'll talk about that later. All right, assignments. There's eight assignments. They're worth 362 points. So the assignments are 36.2% of your grade. Um, you have a final project. And we'll talk about that by like week two or three. Um, you have a project that you have to work on. It'll be an individual project. And it's worth 30% of your grade. Uh, discussion questions, 2.8%. So it's a very small percentage of your grade. But like I said, 28 points is the easiest grade <coughs> that you can get. Um, midterm final and quiz, worth 31%. So you'll have a midterm, a final, and a quiz. Quiz is going to be based on what we're talking about today is a syllabus. So you'll have like maybe 30, 45 minutes, time exam you have to take on a syllabus. So there'll be questions, just kind of read through the syllabus. It might be like, what's the minimum amount of um, words that you need to reply to someone in a discussion question. We know 250 words. How many assignments will there be? Eight piece of cake. So if you study it, you'll be able to kind of breeze through it. Um, other policies and procedures. Um, I won't read through all this. Um, I will talk about makeup exams. So I do permit that you have one makeup exam. So you have three quizzes. So let's say the, um, the first quiz, you get hundred percent, no big deal. Or even if you get an a, a different way, but let's say you take the midterm and you don't do too well on it. You get a D on it or an F on it. Um, you can either accept that grade or retake it. Now, if you retake the midterm and say you go and take the final, and you, you do good the second time on the midterm, awesome. You go and take the final and you flunk the final. Well, you can't retake the final because you already retook it. So I give you one opportunity to retake it. Let's say hypothetically, and I've had this happen before. I had a student come to me. He wasn't satisfied with his grade. He had a, uh, I think it was like an 86%, which is a B. Um, he wanted to retake the exam. We well, ended up with a 44%. So um, I didn't give him that 44%. I gave him the B. Um, so that can happen as well. So just be be alert and be cautious before you make that decision. Um, academic integrity policy. I won't read through this. Plagiarism. We're not going to be writing any uh, um, novels in here. We're not going to be writing any reports in here. However, you just don't want to copy other people's information. So, you know, um, just like for the discussion questions, you just want to use your own um, your own verbiage versus someone else wrote something. Um, but I don't see that being a problem in this class because um, we're not doing anything along that lines. Uh, taking exams, we talked about that. Um, well, this kind of doesn't apply to you because it's online. But it does in a sense because you can easily um, uh, be, I don't know, have a piece of paper and be copying off of it. But I can't see you, so it's online, so that's the risk you take. Um, but this is more meant for someone in person. Um, so assignments, each assignment is a task to complete at one student or group. In this case, we're not going to do a group because I found that doing groups online could be very difficult. People have very busy schedules. Everyone has got a lot going on. So we're going to make it individual, make it easier based off yourself. So um, how I do it is, let's say, usually what I do is your assignment is due Sunday night at midnight, 11.59 p.m. Let's say that you're a minute late. No big deal. You have up to four times um, during the semester. So there's eight weeks in this, in this class, in this class. So you have four times, that's half, half the percentage, 50%. Let's say that, guess what? I'm going to be late. You send me an email, say, Mr. Seaman, I'm not going to have that, um, done on Sunday night, Monday, maybe Wednesday. That's fine. You could use one of your, um, times. You have four, four, four opportunities. And, but here's the thing. Let's say that you use it. You have to have it turned in within four days. So let's say that you turn it in Saturday. Let's pass four days, and it's a zero percent. So I can't give you any any credit. So you'll have up to four days to complete that. Now, once you've gone through your four um, attempts, then after that, it's automatically a zero if it's not in by eleven fifty nine, unless you have an awesome 
excuse. Um, I never accept assignments to attachments. Um, assignments will be submitted to the Blackboard. Um, in some cases, I may say, you know what? Um, I need you to uh, have the code in the source code repository, and that'll be part of your assignment, and I'll check the repository. If it's not in there, then, you know, account is not turning in an assignment. Um, also, when you're turning in assignments, uh, like say you have to write some code, I prefer that you zip the file, even if it's one file.java. I prefer that you zip it and you go this thing, CIT130, week number, last name. It makes it easier for me because when I'm throwing your homework assignments into a folder and checking them on Saturday, Sunday, it makes it easier for me. Uh, emergency notifications, I'll let you go through this. This is in case of alerts. You could uh, follow Twitter and so forth. Drop ad withdrawal, I'll let you kind of read through this. Tells you when you can drop a class or add or withdraw. Um, students and disabilities, Title IX notifications, CCA portal, all this information that kind of helps you out. You could kind of read through that. Um, all right, so we'll kind of get into the course outline plan. So as you see here, week one, we're gonna talk about arrays. Um, we're gonna talk about discussion questions, assignments, and we're also gonna go through um, a source code repository and, and, and potentially um, the first week we'll also talk a little bit about um, um, the different uh, life cycles or we'll hold off to week two, we'll see. Um, week two, we'll talk about, um, you'll have your syllabus quiz, 50 points. Um, it'll be uh, a time exam. Um, we'll have discussion questions. We'll talk about different sorting algorithms within advanced array concepts. Um, week three, we'll talk about swing components. That'll be like JFrame, JLabel. So that'll be kind of like your GUI interface. Uh, we'll review the Blackboard assignment three. We'll review the midterm exam. This is another thing that I like to do is we're having a midterm. There's 50 questions, hypothetically, and they're worth two points. What I'll do is I'll give you guys a, a study exam. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll give you a um, the 50 questions that are going to be on an exam, and you have to study it. Um, or maybe I'll give you 75 questions and 50. But usually I give you exact same questions. All you have to do is study it. And if you study it, you'll be fine. Um, we'll, so I'll give you a preview of what the exam is going to be. And then we'll have the, the week of the exam. Um, that is week four. Week four, we'll have the exam. Week three, we're reviewing it. Uh, week four is an introduction to uh, inheritance. Um, you know what? I'm coming, coming back to this. Probably what I'll do is in CIT 130, what I usually would do with the class is I would go through and ask a question and had a cl class answer, but in this case, they're not able to. So maybe I'll do a video lecture in the same format and then you could study it and so forth. Um, we'll have the, mi the midterm. Um, you'll have a week to take it. So for example, it'll be available from say uh, s m Monday at midnight, which is Sunday after Sunday, all the way up to like Saturday. So you have like six days to take it, seven days. Um, we'll talk about introduction and inheritance. We'll talk about advance. Exception handling in week six. Week seven, we'll talk about final input, output. Week eight, no assignment, um, but you'll have your final exam, um, no discussion questions, and your project will be due that week as well. Um, that's it on the syllabus. Um, kind of going through, kind of streamline of what you're going to learn. I've gone through what's accepted and not accepted. I've gone through the grade planning, um, what book is needed, uh, kind of that coverage out includes and my information. So if you have any questions at all, please reach out to me. You have my email address. I have my phone number. So just give me a heads up. All right. Um, thank you for listening and watching this video. And I look forward to teaching you guys. Thanks. Bye.